Wow. Thank you for coming to see me talk about Indo. I am, I am humbled. You, I know you have a busy schedule. Uh, my name is Oikur. I am the CEO and co-founder of Into Savings Bank, and I am also a banker in recovery. That was a joke. So Into is the first challenger bank, and only, Iceland, only challenger bank out of Iceland. And I am thrilled to stand here today and tell you about what we're all about. And I want to introduce you to my friend. This is Indo. So today, I am going to talk about sort of the origins of Indo. Where do we come from? Because it, it's an important background to what it is that we're trying to achieve. I am also going to talk to you about where we are today and, and the pretty obvious ending of where we are going. It can be said that the origins of Indo are in the last century. So Trikvi, my co-founder and I, we were in the same class together in elementary school. It's a very small country. This is a picture of an essay we did together. And that hangs on our wall of fame at our offices, right next to our coffee machine and our banking license, because we got a banking license in February. Uh, in class, we did projects together, so we know we worked well together. We played basketball in the schoolyard and debated whether Duran Duran or Wham was the better band. So this is the same time as Stranger Things happens. We were young, we're still young, but most of you probably weren't even born. That is also the last time before us when a banking license was granted in Iceland. It's in the late 80s. So we knew we worked well together, and then fast forward a little bit, and we got swept up in the banking boom of the 2000s. Cheap funding, high valuations, pretty much every person in Iceland who graduated from university started working for a bank. And we were going to be the masters of the solar system. We knew banking better than anybody. This couldn't fail. We had our then president describing us as the new Vikings. Look out world, the Icelanders are coming. Couldn't fail. This could not go wrong. Only it did, spectacularly. 2008, things came to a halt. The party ended as parties always do. And then you have to clean up. And that was a job that I had after the party. I was cleaning up. But it wasn't only cleaning up. Iceland itself was in a massive trouble. Because unemployment went up, interest rates went up, people lost their savings, prices ballooned, and there were protests in the streets. People hated bankers and they hated politicians. We even set a Christmas tree on fire in the center of town. So this was really serious stuff. And back in those days, there was this idea that the banks needed to be resurrected, they needed to rise up again, having learned a valuable lesson. That was my job and my co-founder's job for, for a few years. They did rise up only exactly the same as they were before. It's more boring, more institutionalized, more adverse to any change. So we left. Two young middle-aged men had it for greener pastures. But we couldn't shake this idea that, well, the banks still need to change, not only in Iceland, but pretty much all over. So in 2018, we met in a coffee shop. So what do you want to do when we grow up? Remember, we're still young. And then after about three or four espressos, we had a very good idea, or so we thought. Let's build a bank. I mean, between us, we have around 40 years of experience in running a bank, and, and we know how the business works. I mean, how hard can it be? We know the banks need to change. If they don't change, they will just go the way of the dinosaurs and they will die. They will be pushed out. So if we agree that there is room for a new bank, let's just build one. Now, it can be argued that this was a very, very bad idea. 
In fact, when we started, we got all kinds of comments. You will never get a banking license. You just won't. Because if you could, it would already have been done. Well, why shouldn't we get a banking license? We know how the business works, so we'll just go for it. We know what it takes to build a bank. So off we went and said, well, we're not going to listen to that. Then we were told, well, if you do get a banking license, do you know how much it costs to run a bank? Yes, we do. We worked there for a number of years, and we know exactly how much it costs to run a bank. But we also know that the banks are an epitome of inefficiencies. They are expensive because they are just way, way, way too inefficient. We also know how much it costs to run an efficient bank. So we did not listen to that either. Then we were asked, so why a bank? What are you trying to achieve? I mean, banks are arguably the most difficult companies in the world to create. Surely you can do better than that. Surely you can do, just start smaller and achieve what you want to achieve. Well, no. Because what we wanted to do, we wanted to go right into the heart of banking. We worked there, pretty much every department, and we know what is the most valuable banking product out there. It's the customer relationship with all of you the retail customers, people with their salary account. That is the single most valuable component, product, of banking. And if you want to go into harder banking, if you want to really capture that, you have to be a bank. There is no other way. So the product that we are creating and have created is your primary account. It's the new home for your money. Now, what we are also thinking is you as a customer with money in your current account, you are not source of funding because banks traditionally think of you as a source of funding to do stuff on the lending side, which is where the party is. I've been to that party. I've cleaned up after it. I really do not want to go back into that kind of party. So we are focusing on the current account, making that experience the best experience we could possibly, possibly generate. But that's not enough. So what kind of bank? I know the product, but what are you going to be? Fair, transparent, and fun. And why that? Because there was a huge survey done in Iceland in 2018. The government asked people, thousands of people, if there was a new bank in Iceland, what would it represent in your mind? Fairness, simplicity, transparency, fun. That's what we all want in a company. Now, there are bankers out there who might say, well, you know, I'm a bank. We can't be fun. Well, yes, you can. And if you can't, step aside and let somebody else be fun, because that's what the customer wants, and the customer is always right. Okay? But that's not all. We need to have rates. We need to have the rates on our accounts that just reflect this transparency. And we do that by telling people, what are we doing with your money? What, what risk are we taking with your money? and you will be paid accordingly. All kinds of hidden fees. If, if things don't cost us money, we're not going to charge you for them. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So we had this brilliant idea. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go into this space, and we are going to dominate the primary account market, the most valuable product in all of banking anywhere. But it would have been a very, very short journey on our part if it had just been the two of us alone. Now, we know banking. We know banking quite well, actually. But we know nothing about marketing, and we know nothing about IT. And I think one of the most valuable lessons that I learned, and hopefully I can share with, with others, is that as a founder, you need to know what you're good at. That tends to be obvious, but it's really, really important to understand what you're not good at, and try to get people to do that. So, we had a team of superheroes joining us. Yes, we are a team of 13 people. The 13 of us created and launched a new bank. And these people, they are driven by the same motivation and passion as we are. And pretty soon, we also had people joining us, saying, when can I open up an account? Hang on a bit, I need to build this thing first. 
and then on and on until we said, let's just listen to these thousands of people that are helping us out. They are telling us what they want in the back. Let's listen to them and let's, let's use them to help make Indo better. So we are, the product development is done real time with our customers. Iceland is a small market, I know. What are the odds that, that we would start a company having done an essay in, in when we were 15? But the market cap of the Icelandic banks is about 5 billion euros. And we are capturing 30% of the revenues through the products that we're developing. It's a huge, massive market. We haven't even launched yet. We are still in our beta. We are invitation only. But we have 3.5% market share in the current accounts in Iceland. Think about it. We haven't started. And we have this market share. And the customers, they love us. Our net, prom net promoter score, 77. All the other banks are you know, way in the negative numbers. So we know what we're doing. We're building this with our customers, with our Indoans, because they love what we're doing. But why stop there? I mean, if your country is in the same situation, you as a customer of a retail bank with your salaries, you feel neglected, and you feel, well, I'm, I'm not actually the customer. I'm just you know, the source of funding, and nobody listens to me. We're coming. And it's not rocket science. It, it's not complicated. It's like eating an elephant, just one bite at a time. But if it's rocket science, don't listen to the naysayers. We've we ignored them. And just get the perfect crew and enjoy the ride. Thank you. <laughs>